A320 Mentor Channel. Hello everybody! Hi and welcome to this briefing. Today, we'll go through everything you need to know about the use of the Airbus MCDL. We'll speak about specific examples that will help you to better understand the MCDL and its use in operations. In this win video, we will first explain the MCDL concept and organization. And then, we'll explain the specific rules applicable to the Airbus MCDL. So, first of all, what is the MCDL? MCDL stands for Master Configuration Deviation List. If we take a quick look at the regulation, as per the relevant ESA AMC, operation of the airplane without certain secondary airframe and engine parts is allowed through the use of an approved MCDL. The MCDL should be included in the AFM as a separate appendix. Therefore, by definition, the MCDL is an approved list of secondary airframe and engine parts that may be missing for the flight. But what is considered a secondary airframe? According to the IASA, the airframe includes fuselage, booms, nacelles, cowlings, fairings, aerofoil surfaces, including rotors but excluding propellers and rotating aerofoils of engines, and landing gears and their accessories and controls. In fact, secondary airframe refers to elements that are not part of the main structure, like fuselage skins or rings, for example. Then, if we consider that the MCDL items only refer to airframe parts with an aerodynamic impact, why is the refuel-defuel coupling cap included in the MCDL? That is a good point. Actually, to complement the definition, Airbus also considers in the MCDL all parts that protect the aircraft from the external environment, as for example, liquid ingestion. As a result, a refuel defuel coupling cap is a protection from the external environment and it is included in the MCDL. One more thing, the MCDL is included in the AFM for all Airbus aircraft types. The Aviation Authority that approves the Airbus AFM is the IASA, as the primary certification authority for the European aircraft manufacturers. So, the MCDL is a section of the AFM and therefore it follows the same principle. National aviation authorities can review the AFM but they do not approve the AFM as they are only validation authorities and not certification authorities for Airbus products. When a new Airbus aircraft program is initiated, our objective is to establish a complete MCDL at TAP certification, with as many items as possible. Then, as the program matures, the MCDL needs to be adapted and enhanced over the years. The Airbus Flight Operations Department is responsible for the development and the publication of the MCDL items. Flight Operations Engineers and Aircraft Performance Engineers work in close collaboration with various Airbus design offices in order to include new items to the MCDL. The process starts with the analysis from a structural point of view, followed by a specific system safety analysis, then we study the aerodynamics effects, and finally, we analyze the performance impacts at aircraft or engine level. And sometimes, flight tests are also required to investigate any condition that may have a non-acceptable effect for the crew or the passengers. For example, possible noise or vibrations caused by a missing item. Keep in mind that when an airplane is operated under the application of an MCDL item, it must be in accordance with the limitations and performance restrictions specified in the AFM. 
and any aircraft or engine part not included in the MCDL must be considered as necessary for the flight. Another important thing to say is that the MCDL should not be confused with the MMEL. Actually, while the MMEL describes the limitations of the aircraft operation in the case of a system being inoperative or having a misbehavior, the MCDL considers situations where the secondary airframe and engine parts are missing or have fallen off. Regardless of the Airbus aircraft type, each MCDL item is divided into two display units. Keep in mind that the illustrations included in the MCDL are provided only for information to help with the location of the missing items and must not be considered as approved data. The letter M associated with an item indicates that a maintenance action is necessary to permit the flight with this part missing. The MCDL maintenance procedures are published in the AMM or LMM depending on the Airbus aircraft type. Also remember that the MCDL item number may be used to find the associated task in the maintenance manual. So that was a quick overview of the MCDL definition and structure. Now let's move on to the specific rules to know when operating an aircraft under MCDL. The first important rule is about the temporary dispatch authorization under MCDL. Keep in mind that the use of the MCDL enables the operator to temporarily operate the aircraft without specific parts, but the items can only be missing for a limited period of time. When not specified in the MCDL, repairs or replacements must be performed at the first suitable airport. In addition, remember that the MCDL only considers missing items. For example, the aircraft dispatch with a damaged seal is not permitted in the MCDL. The damaged seal must be entirely removed or the damaged part must be cut off. The second important rule to know is about cumulative items. As referred in the limitation section of the MCDL, no more than one part of one system may be missing except if otherwise specified. However, parts of different systems may be simultaneously missing unless otherwise specified in this list. The word system in the MCDL refers to the ATA chapter, for example, ATA 23, communications. In the MCDL, the ID item is divided as follows. Digits 1 and 2 correspond to the ATA chapter and digits 3 and 4 correspond to the item increment. For clarification, this is one example of an MCDL item that authorizes the combination with another item that belongs to the same ATA chapter. Now, let's move on to the performance penalties in the MCDL. As you may know, there are two approved ways of determining the performance impacts of missing items. Using the MCDL chapter of the AFM or using the Octo AFM software that is the computation engine used by the AFB. The MCDL performance penalties associated with the missing items published in the MCDL are envelope penalties. More accurate penalties can be determined by using the EFB. That is why the performance penalties can be different between the EFB and the MCDL. Depending on your operations, you can select the most appropriate method. Just keep in mind that if no performance data are available in the EFB for a specific item, the penalties published in the MCDL must be used. Also, the performance penalties for missing items are cumulative, unless for particular combinations for which specific penalties are indicated. Items for which no performance penalty is indicated in the MCDL are referenced as negligible items. And for these negligible items, two important rules must be highlighted. For F320 family and the F330 F340, 
in the case of more than three MCDL missing items and for which there is no performance penalty indicated per missing item, the penalties will only apply from the fourth missing item as follows. But for the A350 and A380, the calculation is slightly different compared with the A320 family and the A330, A340. In the case of more than three MCDL missing items and for which there is no performance penalty indicated per missing item, the penalties will only apply from the fourth missing item as displayed. Now, what about the MCDL items that have an impact on the MMEL? In this case, the general rule is that the operator must take the most limiting dispatch conditions between the MCDL and the MMEL to permit the aircraft dispatch. This rule is applied in the MCDL for all Airbus aircraft types. It's a way to avoid inconsistency between the manuals. Actually, in all cases, the operator must follow the dispatch conditions set by the MCDL item and also the dispatch conditions imposed by the MMEL item. In addition, based on the different technical analysis, some items can be missing provided that the required maintenance actions before takeoff are completed. Most of the maintenance tasks associated with MCDL items include first covering the whole of the missing structural MCDL item, then deactivating the systems that are exposed when an MCDL item is missing, for example lights, cameras or electrical systems, and finally checking the surrounding area. To end this video, what is most important to remember is that the MCDL is an approved document that only applies to the secondary airframe, the engine parts, and all parts that protect the aircraft from the external environment that may be missing for the flight. Also, remember that the MCDL should not be confused with the MMEL that is more related to aircraft systems. This is the end of our presentation. We hope that you have enjoyed this briefing and see you around for the next one. A320, Mentor Channel.